Hello and welcome to our video on installing Proxmox. Proxmox is an open source software server for virtualization management. It can run operating systems including Linux and Windows on x64 hardware. It is free and runs on a wide range of hardware. It can enable you to run several systems on one computer, making more effective use of resources. Proxmox is available to download from proxmox.com. From the website, there are three products, the Proxmox virtual environment, the Proxmox backup server, and the Proxmox mail gateway. We are interested in the Proxmox virtual environment. So if we click on downloads, this will bring us to the download page. There are links to each of the products here. There is a normal download link and a BitTorrent one. Pick whichever one suits you. The Proxmox ISO is around one gigabyte in size, so may take a few minutes to download depending on your internet connection. You'll need a USB flash drive to write the image to. You'll also need a program to write the image to the USB drive. I use Belina Etcher available at belina.io slash etcher and my instructions will relate to this. Launch the program. Click flash from file and in the requester click the file that you've just downloaded. If a suitable drive has been found it will be automatically selected. If this is correct you can proceed. Click select target or change. When all is ready, click flash. Depending on the speed of your drive, the writing step may take a few minutes. To save time, I have sped up this process. When the process is complete, you'll see a screen that says Flash Complete. Close the program and remove the USB drive. Prepare the PC or server for Proxmox. Insert the USB drive into the PC or server. Switch it on. Enter the BIOS. Normally pressing F1 or F2 will get you in. Check if not. Look for an option called IOMMU. This may also be called Intel VTD. You might need to refer to your motherboard manual to see what it is called. Enable boot from the USB drive. You may also have a separate boot menu you can use. Exit the BIOS and restart. You'll first need to agree to the end user license agreement. Click the I agree button on the bottom right of the screen. You'll now need to select a target hard disk to install Proxmox on. Click next. Now to select your country. Enter this in the country box. I'm located in the United Kingdom, so I type the first few letters and select it. Click tab to move to the time zone. 
This should automatically be filled out. Click Next. Now to type a password. This needs to be a strong password, eight characters long, with a combination of letters, numbers and symbols. Don't forget this password. Also enter an email address. Your Proxmox server will send important alerts to this email account. Click Next. You can also enter networking information. Proxmox will normally offer defaults and if an IP address is picked up using DHCP, it will present this. If you're happy with these defaults, click Next. A summary of details entered during the installation is now presented. Check this and if all is well, click Install. Your installation may take a few minutes to complete. We have shortened the process in this video. the URL will always be shown as part of the login prompt. The web page for the installation will always be on port 8006. When you attempt to go to the web page, you'll be presented with a warning, click advanced, and then the link starting with proceed to. You'll be prompted for a username. This is root. Password is whatever you entered in the installation. The other two options can be left as default. You can save the username. Click Login. You'll be presented with a requester that advises that you do not have a valid subscription for this server. Click OK. You're initially presented with a data center view. Because multiple Proxmox installations can be on the same network as a cluster, this will list the nodes and storage available. I have a 3 terabyte drive installed that was pulled from an older system that needs to be prepared for use. To prepare this, I click on the node, in this case PVE, then Disk. I select the disk, slash def slash sdb, and click wipe disk. This will give a warning that all data will be lost. Click yes to proceed. Select the disk and click initialize disk with GPT. This will format the disk. Click on LVM, then click Create Volume Group to add a partition to the disk. Disk will be automatically populated with the first available disk, but you can click on the drop down to change this. Enter a name, I've chosen Storage 1, then click Create. If you click back to Disks, you'll see that usage for that disk now shows LVM. The installation is now complete, but I recommend a few post-installation steps. Enabling IOMMU in etc. default scrub. This allows us to pass through devices such as USB devices and graphics devices. Update grub using update-grub this writes the above change to allow devices to be passed through. Enable some modules in etc. modules to pass through to virtual machines. You'll need to connect either using a keyboard and mouse or alternatively an SSH tool such as PuTTY. Log into the system using root as the username and your password. At the system prompt, enter nano slash etc. slash default slash grub. This is the bootloader for Linux that runs before the kernel is loaded into memory.
we need to modify a line here to enable IOMMU. Find the line grub underscore cmd line underscore linux underscore default. After the word quiet, add a space and type intel underscore iommu equals on. For AMD systems, this should be amd underscore iommu equals on. Once the change has been made, save the file by pressing Ctrl X. You'll be asked if you want to save changes. Enter Y and enter. Accept the default file name and press enter. Next, type update-grub and press enter. This will write the above changes to the bootloader. Next, type nano slash etc slash modules and press enter. Use the arrow keys to scroll down below the comments. Enter the following modules. VFIO VFIO underscore IOMMU underscore type 1 VFIO underscore PCI VFIO underscore VIRQFD Save by pressing Ctrl X, Enter Y and Enter to save and Enter again to accept the file name. To ensure IOMMU is now set up, reboot the system by typing reboot and pressing Enter. There are just two more post installation steps to complete. Enable VLAN aware on the network adapter. This allows Proxmox to minimise network traffic by allowing VMs to communicate with specific VLANs. Download the VertIO drivers. This enables the guest VM to know it's running in a virtual environment and cooperate with Proxmox. We will upload the ISO to Proxmox to make it available to guest VMs to install the relevant drivers. Select the node, in this case PVE. Click Network and look for the Linux Bridge Adapter. Double click on this. Click on the VLAN Aware tick box and click OK. To apply this straight away, click Apply Configuration. I will be rebooting the system which will enable the option. To download the VIRT.io drivers, go to https colon backslash backslash pve dot proxmox dot com slash wiki slash windows vert io drivers scroll to installation and click download the latest stable this will download the iso Once downloaded, go back to your Proxmox dashboard. Expand the node and select the local storage. You will see an ISO images option, click on this. Click the upload button and click select file on the requester. Browse to the download location and double click the file. Click the upload button. Once uploaded, the ISO file will show in the ISO images section. Proxmox is now set up. I will quickly cover the dashboard for a further walkthrough or have a more detailed video. Click Summary. This shows statistical information about the system, such as CPU, memory and storage data. 
It shows data on the guests running on the system, both virtual machines and containers. It shows the nodes in the cluster. A list of recent tasks performed by the system is shown, along with a cluster log. If you click on the node and click Summary, this shows information about the currently running node. CPU usage and current load, along with memory usage and current load. It also shows what CPU you are running, kernel version and PVE version. Charts exist for CPU usage, server load and memory usage. The default for these charts is an hour average. There are several time periods to choose. Buttons allow you to reboot or shut down the node, launch a shell to perform Linux commands, bulk commands allowing bulk starting or stopping of VMs or migrating to another node, and a help button. At the top, you're able to access Proxmox documentation, create a VM or create a container. You're also able to access menu options for the current user, such as logging out or changing settings. Thank you for viewing. Please like this video and subscribe so you can see our other videos.